You can't have your own version of the truth, it seemed to well, me. Well, you have... It's complicated because when people say that, they, they are referring to the, to the degree that they're referring to anything, that, that there are some experiences that are in some ways purely subjective, and they're also valid in their subjectivity. So, for example, if you're sitting there and you say, I'm in pain, and it's assuming I believe you're not manipulating mm. me, I don't have access to that pain, but I'm, it's reasonable for me to assume that that's a genuine experience on your part and act accordingly. And so there is a realm where experience is valid that's subjective, mm. but that doesn't mean that everything that happens to you subjectively is now to be regarded by fiat as the truth I have to abide by. And shouldn't we, in a, in a democracy, should it not be my right to listen to you with great respect and then say, I don't believe a word of what you just said? Yeah, really. It's, on free speech, it seems to me, in my 57 years of being on this planet, that free speech has never been under more ferocious attack, not mm -hmm. in places you would expect, like authoritarian regimes, mm -hmm. but actually in, in democracies. I never mm -hmm. thought I'd, I'd come to a day in my lifetime where people were literally being fired mm -hmm. or, in some cases, imprisoned for mm -hmm. expressing honestly held opinions. Even we're having a fight about whether or not your claim that free speech exists is nothing but a masquerade for your willingness to dominate and use power. And mm. so if I was taking that tack, I'd say, it's all well and good for you to speak about free speech, but look, you're white and you're middle class and you're British and, mm. you're, and you're privileged, and you have this theory about free speech that your ancestors derived, but the only reason they ever derived that to begin with is so they could exercise their power. Mm. There's no such thing as free speech. That's just a lie to mask a power claim. And that's a way worse cynical criticism of the notion of free speech than you can't speak because I don't agree with I mean, it's a, it's a form of fascism, isn't it? I mean, these people... It's worse than that. The, the kind of... The, the ultra-woke uh, brigade out there, they, they categorise themselves as liberals, but there's nothing liberal about that mentality. When you have a cancel culture, which is driven by, if you don't agree with what I say, you're going to get shamed, vilified cancelled, fired, maybe even in prison. That is yeah. actually what fascist regimes do to people, to their populace. Yeah, but the fascists are more straightforward about it because they basically come out and say something like, shut up or we'll beat you. Right. Whereas the compassionate types, who are narcissistic compassionate, compassionate types, they come out and say, well, we're really trying to save the world, you know, and we're, we're acting in everyone's best interest and we think it would be better if, if you should just, you know, regulate what you say. Because if you don't, you're not you're not a good person, and so that's it's much more. I'd.